Hello everyone and welcome to a discussion of the shuttle reentry script for the shuttle meant for realism overhaul in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. Your results may vary otherwise. Uh, this is the Dylan Simro version of the radar version of the DECQ version of the CSS shuttle, as far as I know. The Mike NZ version of the CSS shuttle. Uh, there was a component space shuttle, CSS shuttle, then that was adopted by Mike NZ, then DECQ, then uh, radar, then Dylan Simro. And I've done a video on it before, and so you should take a look at the videos on the shuttle installation and then the upgraded version of that, updated version of it, uh, to understand what's going on with all that business. But uh, yeah, it's pretty critical that you have the same version of the shuttle for the re-entry script to work, otherwise its dynamics are going to be different. It's going to get different lift, it's going to get different drag and all that business. So that would throw it off. And uh, to that end, I will share the configuration files. And so let's begin with a discussion of that. And so here we have my the install that I've tested everything in as far as the shuttle is concerned. And there's two aspects to the configuration files. There's the uh, realism overall configurations, which are under RO suggested mods space shuttle system. And I will link these as I have them. I've the only ones I've touched, you can see by the date modified. If it's October 30th, that means it's uh, the regular version. And uh, otherwise, these three I have changed. Unsurprisingly, fuselage, life support, and wing surfaces. Uh, so those are the things I have changed. But I'll link these in the video description and in a zip. And you can get them. If your version, if you go into this folder and you have other files in here, I suggest you get rid of them. It might be a texture replacer, but that will conflict with the one that comes with the mod. And that might cause you to not have certain parts. So if you find some parts missing, that might be a problem. So then the other folder that we're interested in is space underscore shuttle underscore system. It's pretty critical that the folder structure is the same and you have like these texture files in here under this folder. Otherwise, uh, well, things won't load. And under parts, so I'm not gonna, uh, the airlock is in, uh, inconsequential. None of these are particularly consequential uh, to the dynamics of the shuttle. These are just other parts that I think I might have actually uh, got from other places anyway. Uh, but the texture files up front are essential, these cabine ones, for instance. And so, there's a parts folder and a shuttles folder, and then this is a, another set of stuff. And the ones that we are interested in are the ones whose, again, timestamp is not May 24th, 2020. And so the cabin, the cargo bay, the elevons, the engine mount, and uh, the tail, which I only... Uh, I tried to edit to get rid of the silts pod, but that didn't work. That's why it's been edited more recently than anything else. And the wings. Uh, so again, I'm going to just link the configuration files. You have to be careful. Make sure that when you uh, get them and uh, put them in your folder, that they are replacing the thing that they're supposed to replace. You do not want two different configuration files, the same thing. And that when you open them up, in and uh, take a look at them in Word, uh, Notepad or something like that, for instance. So let's go back to Notepad. When you open them up, make sure that uh, if, if you're missing the part, then check that the model is in the right place for the different things. So here we have, uh, for some reason, two different model bits. Uh, uh, maybe this is a landing. Oh, there's, yeah, LG, this is landing gear. So. It's got a model for the wing and a model for the landing gear, and so that's what it is. So I'm not linking the whole mod because I don't know whether I have the rights to it, etc. But the configuration files are probably safe, so that's why I'm linking those. But technically, I can't redistribute models. Uh, well, not without permission. So anyway, so that's what I'll give you. And let's go on to the reentry script. So. What is happening here? First of all, it turn I'm just going to go through it in order. SAS gets turned off, throttle is down, and then there's the steering manager. This uh, determines how long it puffs the RCS before... It so, 
Okay, what it says is that it'll use as much RCS as it can while making sure that it'll take less than 16 seconds to stop itself with the RCS. So that's what, so the max stopping time is 16 seconds, and that's what that means. So given the shuttle's rate of turning, that that's not too bad. And it's got a clear screen. You can see I tried to adjust the PID, the way it controls the shuttle in more detail here, but that led to inconsistent results depending on what attitude the shuttle was starting in. And I didn't want to like write a PID from scratch or anything like that. So I, so these are all commented out. Then we set the planet radius. Uh, that's important. And the target longitude and latitude. So I've uh, put commented here, if you want it uh, to land at the Cape, then you need to put the Cape numbers. If you want them to land at Edwards, put the Edwards numbers at White Sands. Now, you won't have anything at Edwards and White Sands to land at unless you've done something clever, like place a runway with Kerbal Constructs. And the reason my target longitude and latitude here are different from the ones at Edwards, even though it's supposed to be landing at Edwards like this, is because the place I put the facilities in my save uh, was a little bit different because I wanted to make sure it was flat terrain. That's basically it. So it's a little bit offset from where Edwards actually is. So it is calculating the distance. Uh, this degree distance calculation isn't used anymore. Uh, that was uh, the old version that of the re-entry script that I don't use anymore. So it's just lingering there for a little bit. It's like an appendix. Uh, ship inclination to orbit inclination, that's just for convenience so I don't have to type this whole thing out of over again. And uh, there's a longitude adjustment factor that was used before, but I don't think I use that anymore. But that was, again, a vestige of the previous uh, version of the script. And this sets whether it does S-turns. This is something new I added, and the S-turns will be used to control the, the how far the shuttle is going, it burns off energy, but I'm still also using the pitch to help burn off energy. So it still varies the pitch from 37 to 44 degrees, but uh, now it's also got the ability to burn off energy using S-turns. And it also will try to turn towards the landing site properly using a turn. That's a separate kind of turn, but anyway, this is the function that's used to calculate the direction of stuff and all the functions are down here. This is the end of the main loop that it'll just keep running through. It always runs through the main loop. Uh, so the main loop starts with this until and it says until mode equals zero. So keep doing that until mode equals zero. And then uh, of course at the very end of this, we set the mode to zero. So it'll end when we hit that and it ends when we hit the altitude 15,000 meters, at which point it sets SAS on, unlocks steering, prints that's concluded, and sets mode to zero. So that's the end of that bit. And under there, we have the functions. And so there's the function that gets the, the current position of the ship uh, in pitch, yaw, and roll, and also the prograde heading. So this is uh, just getting that information about the ship. It's not getting target information here. Um, the target information is gotten by this get direction uh, thing. And so we uh, feed in the latitude and longitude of us and the target. And then this uh, does the math to calculate where the target is, what the target heading is. So that's that function. Okay, so this is getting our position. Uh, this gets the direction, again, of the target uh, based on our latitude, target's latitude, our longitude, the target's longitude, and we input the target there. And the distance to the target, same information. And again, the function is down below. Uh, set the orbit periapsis. So when it deorbits us and does the deorbit burn, and you have to make sure that you're in line with your landing site before initiating this reentry script, and you, uh, one caveat is that you have to be in a one and a half hour orbit because that's all I tested it at. Could it work from another orbit? Maybe, but it's not obvious that it does. I've always tested it from one and a half hour orbit for convenience, for consistency sake. So uh, just a one and a half hour orbit in line with your landing site. 
and then this will determine what the the orbit burn is going to bring the periapsis down to. It will generally be negative. Um, so it's 30,000 meters minus the ship's mass, which is typically 80 tons-ish, times 400. So it's going to be a negative number. This was the old uh, thing that I did in 1.1.3, I think. So yeah, things have changed quite a lot. That's really an indication of how much things have changed since then as far as the dynamics of the shuttle, which is always a frustration. Reentry pitch is set to 40. That's just what the shuttle's pitch, that's the default pitch you'll get to. And the pitch down alt altitude is when it goes from the 40 degree pitch and starts pitching down to the negative 20 degree pitch that has on approach uh, to whatever your target site is. So if it starts pitching down too early, it'll tend to have problems, yaw problems. If it pitches down too late, it'll tend to stall and have a flat spin. So this is what I tested it out to be, to be a good pitch down altitude and it'll pitch down smoothly down from that. Then this deorbit distance is how far away from the target site it does the deorbit burn. And that is calculated uh, very particularly 70,960 plus uh, 7.5 times the ship's or, uh, inclination and plus a factor that's dependent on the ship's mass. And that's just by experimentation. Uh, so if you see that it's doing something wrong, you may want to change that, tweak it a little bit. Uh, that would be fine. Uh, but keep in mind that when you tweak that, there's also the fact that down below it is looking at its distance to the target and trying to figure out how to pitch itself and whether to do the S turns or not. And you can turn the S turns off by saying this to zero, by the way, or anything else but one. Uh, but it's going to be trying to figure out whether to do those maneuvers or not based on its distance. And so just setting the deorbit distance uh, differently won't necessarily... Uh, so if you set it closer to the target, you might think, well, then uh, if you're undershooting, you might want to set it closer to the target or reduce this number. But then if it's trying to do S turns to burn off the energy, you might still end up falling short unless you also change those things down below. Uh, so we'll take a look at that in a sec. So target roll to zero. That should be obvious. Uh, we're just going to be heads up and uh, heading correct to zero. That's for later purposes. Um, env altitude and env longitude is how it's going to figure out. It's going to chunk the path down into bits and it's got to figure out well in this bit uh, where am I in the altitude from 1 to 0 and where am I in the longitude from 1 to 0 so if you've got if the bit is from 70,000 meters to 80,000 meters then it's going to set the 70,000 meters to 0 and the 80,000 meters to 1 and it's going to figure out what longitude it should be at it's not really longitude it's distance now what distance away from the target it should be at when it's at 70 to 80,000 feet, uh, sorry, meters. <laughs> 70 to 80 kilometers, it's going to try and figure out, and so it's going to compare those numbers. We'll see that down below. Uh, these little bits are just to um, print information. It'll tell you how far it was from the target at 120 kilometers, 100 kilometers, 90 kilometers, 60 kilometers, 50 kilometers. The reason why we skip the stuff between uh, 90 and 60 is because it tends to get lift at that. So it actually crosses 70 and 80 kilometers multiple times. And to that end, we have this bounce variable. The bounce variable is going to determine whether it has bounced, whether it has gone up or not. And we'll see that at work later. So uh, we calculate direction again. No, we don't really need this. <laughs> it's a duplicate of the thing up there. I'll just take that out, it'll be fine. I think. Okay, so set mode to four. This is uh, means that it'll jump to figuring out where it is in altitude. So by default, in case you accidentally have to start this uh, script in the middle of something, uh, let's say you're already going down, you have to disable it for some reason and you need to re-enable it, it'll jump to this segment, mode four, and it will um, look through and see where it's at and what it should be doing. Okay, so 
set mode to four, and then if ship altitude is more than a hundred thousand meters, I always want to say feet, set mode to one. And actually, I'm gonna change that. That's probably better if that's one hundred forty thousand um, outside of the atmosphere. So set mode to one. Okay, until mode is zero. Well, mode is one, so it'll do this. And if mode is one, which is where it is, uh, it'll continually get the new direction and new distance and its own position. And it's going to set the previous distance to target distance, wait, and then get it again. And so that'll give it the delta of the distance. Basically, we're getting two readings on the distance and subtracting them to see whether we're getting closer or not. And because otherwise, if we're getting further away, that's not where we want to do the re-entry burn. We want to make sure we're getting closer to the target. We're past the halfway mark, halfway around the world from the target. There we go. So this is going to check whether we're past halfway around the world from the target. Uh, RCS is off. If the target distance is... So we have this deorbit distance. That's where we want to deorbit. And we're adding 300, so we give ourselves a little bit of space before that to turn around and turn retrograde. And so it'll try and figure out when it's 300 to 600 kilometers away from the retrograde burn point. And if it's not, if it's uh, either too close or too far away, it'll set time warp to two. Uh, if it is within 300 to 600 kilometers from the retrograde burn target, and it is reading that it is getting closer to the target, then it'll take us out of warp turn RCS on, turn retrograde, and set mode to 2. If you want to fine-tune this and uh, for the angle of the OMS engines, that's fine, I don't. Okay, so set mode to 2, and it continues to get the information. Every bit of the loop will try and get the information at the beginning. Uh, lock steering to retrograde, and if we hit the correct number for the deorbit burn, and the ship periapsis is greater than the deorbit periapsis, we make sure that we turn on the engine. If the ship periapsis is less than or equal to the deorbit periapsis, we shut down the engine and change mode. So that will be the deorbit burn taken care of. And then we get into the turnaround to get into the attitude for entry. And this starts at 166 kilometers. So if it's at an altitude higher than 166 kilometers, it'll time warp. If it's lower than 166 kilometers, it'll take us out of time warp. And we want the max stopping time to be 16 initially, but you can see it drops that down so it doesn't wiggle too much. But sometimes you get wiggling. If it seems to be wiggling too much and using too much RCS for you, especially in roll, uh, use caps lock. And once it gets a good grip on the atmosphere, it should stop that. You must turn caps lock off by 70 kilometers altitude, otherwise the RCS will not have enough um, authority in order to control yaw. So, 166 kilometers, calculate the, um, our position information, you know, pitch yaw and roll, that's what that does. And we want to be heading, a prograde heading, uh, with a heading correction if necessary, but we that's set to zero at the top and the entry pitch was which was 40. And so it's turning to that heading with a zero roll and at 50, 150 kilometers it'll reduce the max stopping time at 140 it reduces the max stopping time to try and tighten it up a bit. And then once we hit the atmosphere at 140 kilometers it sets mode to 4. And now it's taking a look at what altitude it's at and how far away it is from the target. And so in every cycle it gets the information and then it says, well, first chunk, if I'm between 140 and 120 kilometers, I manage pitch like this, and there's a function down below for it. It inputs the target distances that we should be at. So at 140 kilometers, it's saying that we should be at 9,600, and at 120 kilometers, we should be at 8,750. And then based on that information, it sends that over to the pitch manage function, which we'll take a look at now. And so you, these parameters are the inputs, and it creates ranges and that envelope, and it's a normalized envelope. Uh, so one, a zero to one, though it goes negative or greater than one sometimes, uh, that should be fine. It won't 
create any problems. And it says, okay, well, if my altitude is higher than where it should be relative, uh, where the distance is supposed to be. So again, we're, we're setting it to zero to one. And so if we are at a higher altitude and we're too close, it's going to pitch up. That's basically what that says, uh, pitch to 44 degrees. And if we're too far away, that's this condition, uh, pitch down to 37 degrees. And uh, if you would like it to just hold 40 degrees the whole time, you can just set these to 40 and it won't do anything. Uh, and if it reads that the two numbers are very close together, then it'll go back to 40 degrees. That's what that does. So that's the pitch management thing. We aren't doing any roll management yet uh, at the high altitudes because there's no air uh, or negligible. Uh, at 100 kilometers, it'll start doing roll management and it will allow the shuttle, what this means is it'll allow the shuttle to roll by 30 degrees if we are far enough away from the target. So it's saying that if the altitude is further than it should be, go ahead and use 30 degrees of roll. If we are closer than we should be, and uh, yeah, uh, sorry, if we're, if we're higher up than we should be and have too much energy, uh, use 30 degrees of roll. If we don't have enough energy and we're falling short, use five degrees of roll because otherwise we'll lose too much energy. So that's what that's saying. And so this uh, is consistent throughout the blocks. You can adjust them as necessary. So yeah, that's the standard. It'll try and be at 30 degrees roll if uh, it can, if it's got enough extra energy. And so the roll management thing is it, that parameter is the max roll. And this a whole bunch of stuff means that, first of all, are we pointing, are we going in the right heading? If not, it's gonna try and turn towards the target, but only if the target's in front of it. That's what this condition is. If the target is behind it, behind the shuttle, if, if we've already passed the target, it'll just set the roll to zero. So otherwise it'll flip around and things go bad. So we don't want it to try and flip around. We want it to continue pointing forward, but it'll try and roll uh, using this and uh, according to the roll limits. Now, what if we wanted to do the S turns, but uh, the heading is fine. We're already in line with the target. It doesn't need to roll, but we want it to burn off energy anyway. So uh, if we are relatively in line with the target to 0.3 degrees is the envelope we're using there. So if we're in 0.3 degrees to the target, if we have not enabled S turns, it'll just set roll to zero. If we have enabled S turns and uh, it turns out that we are we have extra energy. That's what this means. Whenever envelope altitude is greater than envelope longitude, just think of it as we have too much energy. And uh, and we have to check that we're within max roll limitations. Then go ahead and do a roll. Uh, so do a roll even though we're pointing at the target. Now, of course, the roll would take us offline from the target, but then it'll just go to this uh, these conditions and turn back the other way, right? So it'll effectively do an S turns. This is going to take it off the target, turn it one way. And then once it's far enough away, 0.3 degrees, it'll turn back towards the target using the earlier functions. And so this is basically the S turn bit. Okay. So that's how the role management works. And so going back up. And so whenever we see role manage, that's what it's trying to do. And otherwise, if you want to change its behavior, uh, you know, you can change how much it's rolling. Again, above 70 kilometers, I generally have caps lock on, so it doesn't use too much RCS for this. Under 70 kilometers, uh, you can turn it off. You should reserve at least 180 meters per second for the entire re-entry starting from the retro burn. Uh, so, uh, well, starting from the turnaround to retrograde, and then the ret everything that the script has to do try and save about 180 meters per second for that. You might not need all of it. Uh, but yeah, if uh, these are just the numbers I tested and you notice it's keeping track of the bounces because depending on you know whether we're in a bounce or not in a bounce, uh, we would be different distances and you can see the distances there. 
And so if you're falling short, you might want to change those. And uh, if you're going too long, you might want to change those. That's up to you. So hopefully that's a good enough explanation for how this all works. But it's all in chunks based on the altitude. And because we bounce, there are, diff there are chunks that cover the same altitude repeatedly, like 84 kilometers to 70 kilometers, 84 kilometers to 70 kilometers. Well, this is the 84 kilometers to 70 kilometers when we're going up. Then if we start going down again, it sets bounce to two. And then so this bounce equals two. This is when we're going down again. So first, this bit is as we're going down normally, then it starts going up positive vertical speed, it'll go into this one, and then it gets negative vertical speed again, it goes into this one. And then we continue negative, it'll hit this 70 to 65, but then when vertical speed is positive, it'll sit bounce to three, it goes to this one, so this is when we're bouncing up, and then once we're going down, it's sit bounce to four, and now we're going down again. So, yeah. The distances are all calibrated based on which one of those bits we are at. Okay, and then at 45 uh, kilometers, it'll just set the pitch to 40 and it'll stop rolling because at that point, if we're not lined up with the target, uh, it's too late. So it'll stop rolling. And then at the pitch down altitude, currently set to 35 kilometers, it'll really tighten up its control so that it's not wiggling much. And actually, our uh, steering manager will reset to default, and uh, we'll set mode to 9, and this uh, is the bit where it goes down to 20 degrees, and this determines how fast it does that. Uh, so the pitch is going to go down, and then at 15 kilometers, hand control to you. Now, it used to be 5 kilometers, but I decided I wanted a little bit more leeway to correct things if things go horribly wrong. So that's why I set it to 15 kilometers. And I'll turn SAS on and then give control. Um, this is the information it prints to the screen so that you can figure things out, including the distances at the various uh, heights, and those are accessed by these lines set dist 120 to target dist. Those will tick, uh, actually continually change until it hits 120 kilometers there. And then this one will continue to change until it hits 100 kilometers. That's just how it is for now. Um, I didn't want to complicate things. The other functions here, calculate which direction is east, the compass heading, this is all built into the direction stuff and uh, the direction calculations. And so, and there's the target stuff, uh, the pitch stuff, the roll stuff, and that's it. So those are the only functions that we have here. So that's all of it in a nutshell. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything I need to say that I haven't covered already. Uh, the relevant numbers that you will want to tweak, uh, well, you can tweak anything, but uh, this distance would be one thing. If you find that the behavior, depending on the ship's mass, seems to be different, like it's hitting sometimes when there's a light mass, but not when it is a heavy mass, you might want to change this. And uh, which way around is this? So right now, uh, increasing this number will make it start the burn earlier and if you decrease that number it will make the burn start later with a heavier mass so if you're falling short you'll want to decrease this number if you are going long you'll want to increase this number okay and overall if it's not dependent on mass uh, if you're falling short you'll want to decrease this number if you want you know, if you're going long you want to increase this number and if it seems to be dependent on the inclination, you can change that factor. Uh, and again, you might want to change where these hit. Like if you're falling 50, 50 kilometers short, just go through and change them by 50 kilometers might be for the best. And yep, yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's basically what I've been doing to get the numbers. It's not the most rigorous thing ever. And there are better ways of doing it, but 
it's been fun. <laughs> so anyway, hopefully I've given you enough time to mess around with it. And I'll link this in the video description along with those configs. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy the results with this. Maybe. It's a tough one. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.